boom, I'm back. Surprise, everybody. I win. People like it when I yell into the mic, or at least the people that like it out commented the people that don't. Sorry, Doug. Your ears are going to get blown out. Anyway, this is Mind Pump, the best fitness and health podcast in the world. One of the reasons why we're so awesome is we give free things away all the time. Here's today's free giveaway. Free access to the Mind Pump private forum. So we'll let you in for free. Normally, you have to pay. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Make it a good comment. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If you do all those things and we pick your comment, we will notify you and you'll get free access to our private forum. Also, two workout programs are on sale right now. 50% off. That's MAPS Performance and MAPS Suspension. Go sign up or go check them out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code SEPTEMBER50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Doug, too far. <laughs> Can't help himself, dude. Can't hey, help himself. I have a very demented uh, sense of humor. If people only right knew how how dark Doug's sense of humor was, I yeah. swear to God, dark it makes Doug strikes again. It, it, makes, it makes my sense of humor like Disney. We would be canceled for sure. We would. Yeah, so 100%. you know, we're starting this podcast uh, with that. We don't know what the hell just happened. <laughs> you have no idea. Which hey, I want to talk to you guys about supplements. You guys know I like supplements. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. So this is a thing. I that see I you changed your Lululemon purse to Let's it. Not like talking about the supplement bag. <laughs> Every time you guys bring, bell. yeah, it's a Carhartt satchel. Listen to me, I like it. Jessica actually bought that for what was it for Father's Day? She oh, bought good. me a supplement bag. Good for her. Oh, it's, a least, it's a manly one too. Carhartt. Well, that's sick. Yeah. I like it. Uh, it's cool. Huh? Better look, than the cute little Lululemon hey, bag. It looks like a construction. Like you buy a uh, uh, Lulu uh, sports bras in. Uh, yeah, you got hey. your little UGG tote bag. It looks like it looks like my lunch. Like I'm gonna go do some manual labor. Hey, did I lose? Boy, did I lose that bet, huh? Which one? When we were talking about the UGGs, I saw that clip go up on Instagram. Oh, come on, bro. Jeez, I got it. There's two things that you brought up recently. Get out of here with that Hold stuff. on a second. There's two things you brought up. I'll get to the supplements, everybody, but real quick. Two things you brought up recently that you were so sure yeah. was not you. Mm. One was who would wear Uggs. That's I can't even believe you said that. Like, obviously yeah, I mean, you. it's like totally I you. can't and believe then, the audience yeah. agrees with you fuckers. And, and That's what the, I can't believe. And then the second one, yeah, which, which we know another people, who's the most likely to go to jail? I was like, are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> that, one was on, my, that was my bad for not thinking that all the way through. Yeah, so. I don't know. You know what? I don't know why, but what came to mind, like, because Justin has got the temper out of all of us for sure. Yeah. yeah. For and sure. Justin has been thrown out. I've been with Justin when he's thrown out of bars. So yeah. that was what was going through my mind. Everything, like, everyone's on edge with where where we're at right now and I'm like you know well, it depends on Justin's, the crime yeah, you know? yeah exactly. <laughs> I think it's crime dependent yeah, yeah. 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 who's if most violent acts yeah. probably give me who's me. most likely to get thrown in a you know, federal penitentiary yeah, yeah. 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 I go I go federal this guy would go yeah. state yeah. Yeah. he's going there to hold go. himself yeah. 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 I'll be in I'll own that I'll be in Guantanamo Bay nobody will know <laughs> you know what I mean yeah anyway shut you up supplement stuff okay so Yohimbi what do you guys know about Yohimbi energy yeah, yeah so it has a cool name. That's it's, all I know. It's a it's a stimulant. It's actually um, some interesting uh, statistics about it. Right, it's one of the few supplements. <clears throat> everybody, relax when I say this because I'm going to ex- uh, kind of explain it. One of the few sh- supplements that's been shown to amplify quote unquote fat burning. So don't take it to burn body fat. It's not a huge effect, but it does show that it does get your body to utilize fatty acids a little bit more. Yeah, okay, so can I stop you there? Because yeah. uh, when they when I hear the studies that connect to things like that, right, and you even hear that with well, most all stimulants, they say that. Is, it, is there some sort of mechanism that is speeding the metabolism up or is it because it gives you energy and you move more and therefore you burn more calories, therefore we can attach it to burning more fat? So the receptors that it, it activates uh, are receptors that do burn more calories that do cause the release of what are called catecholamines, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Okay. So in other words, so but, it, but there's that, and then there's the real world study. So the problem with those is you look at it from a chemical perspective of what's happening to the body. And then they'll, they'll make uh, assumptions based off of that. The problem is that they, for example, if you do cardio on an empty stomach, you will see that there's more fatty acid utilization. So on paper, Oh, Fasted cardio burns more body fat. The problem is it all balances itself out late throughout the day. Really, it's about calorie deficit. It doesn't make a difference. So with something like Yohimbi or other fat burners, you know, quote unquote fat burners, they'll show that on paper. But then when the real world, when they're applied, they don't necessarily pan out. Although sometimes they do a little bit. And I agree with you. I think it has more to do with the you're moving more because you're hyped yeah. and then mm-hmm. maybe appetite. Because uh, I used to tell. Yeah, right. Because I used to tell clients if we controlled everything. 
calories. I mean, you took somebody, one person takes Yohimbi or any other any other st stimulant or fabric, yeah. and we locked that person in, in position and locked another person in position. Fed them the same. And yeah, exactly fed the same, same metabolisms already. I think there would be very negligible like difference between the two of them. I think yeah. so. But I think what ends up happening is you take something like any of us have ever had, if you ever had your first time taking caffeine or a oh. high dose. Yeah, you start fidgeting yeah. everywhere. I'm get doing all this. And, yeah. and that stuff, add, that really adds. And that's that neat. And that adds up throughout the day. And if you're more energetic and finger tapping and toe tapping all day long, well, yeah, that could that could actually calculate to be a few hundred calories, which, by the way, that's like a workout for some people. It can be, especially if you're doing it all day. And I think the biggest effect is the appetite suppression because I think eventually your body balance is even that out. Mm -hmm. But I think when you take stuff like that, you just don't want to eat. Um, and that's probably the effect, but that also eventually ba balances it out because your body adapts and whatever. But here's not, that's not why I took your hand. I, I could have you less. taken it straight, like just by itself. Yes, I have. Me. And you do, you feel a bit of a stimulant effect. Okay. Not unlike other stimulants. It does feel different than caffeine, but not, on, but, but similar, right? Uh, Yohimbi has been used for erectile dysfunction and libido boost actually quite successfully in a lot of men. So sometimes men can take Yohimbi and notice a boost in, in libido. There might even be an effect in women. I'm not taking it for that either. Yeah. Uh, got my bare aspirin, got my yeah. Viagra, got my Yohimbi. See, again, with something like that, yeah. is that because they uh, the it promotes more movement, more movement promotes more oxygen, more blood flow, more oxygen, more blood flow also can help with erection. There's actually like, a different mechanism. I can't okay. remember what it was, but there, there's a different mechanism behind that. that. Again, I'm not taking it for that either. It's, the reason why I did it is because uh, I wanted to stack it with other stimulants for my workout. So that's what I did. I took a little bit of Yohimbi with caffeine, the citrulline, the beta alanine. I did agmatine, which is another uh, kind of stimulant slash nitric oxide booster or whatever. And it's small dose. It's like, what am I doing? Three milligrams of Yohimbi. And oh, yeah, it definitely works. Now, I know it's not going to work if I keep taking it. But it definitely works. I definitely had that fire in my workout. Now, when you're using stuff like this and messing with it, will you also, because you probably use the red juice out of all of us the most, yeah. will you use that at the, in conjunction? Or will you, when you're going non-stimulant, you'll use that? Or would you ever do both? Oh, uh, would I do both? Would, <laughs> well, I, that's, would I combine I'm asking this question because I have a feeling you've <laughs> already messed with both. And so what's uh, what's your theory? Yeah, or when you're in the lab, like, what does that look like? I love you're... mixing a yeah. bunch of shit together. And I don't recommend that. It's actually probably dangerous. But... This, the way I, you should use the red juice is when you wean yourself off of stimulants. Okay. Because it's it, it'll help you uh, with the, the side effects. When you start to go off stimulants, you feel like crap, right? But the red juice has got, you know, beetroot powder. It's got rhodiola a little bit. It's got some other stuff in there that'll kind of make you feel better. It's not stimulatory, but you'll feel better. So when you go off caffeine, red juice is great for that. Now, if you want to be an asshole, then you throw everything together and see what happens. Well, but I don't recommend that. I mean, you don't recommend it, but there is something kind of cool about the calming effect that you get from the red juice and like kind of natural energy and then doing something that's like stimulant based and combining them together. It almost kind of reminds me of that feeling I get with uh, like theanine and caffeine. Oh, yeah. A little bit, but I would rather do gold juice with that then. Oh, if really? I wanna, yeah. If I want to do that, then I'll go gold juice with stimulants and then I'll get that balance. The red juice might actually amp it up so a little bit. you taper that high a little bit so it can extend it longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I did. I, I've been doing the the gold juice because the night. gold juice has cordyceps and things like that in it, right? No, it's what's, got what's inside uh, that? Uh, turkey tail. I think reishi's in there. Oh, reishi. That yeah, it's I was got, trying to remember got, what mushroom it had in it's there. It's got calming uh, ingredients in there. Yeah, it's good. It's got good, you know, turmeric in there, which is good for inflammation. So that's why they say drink it at night. It's relaxing, help you sleep. But you take it with the stimulant, you get this nice, smooth kind of effect. Yeah. And, but I, I have been taking it at night, actually, more recently, because they have the pumpkin spice, which I... Now, in pumpkin spice. I mean, I like uh, that. So if, if I'm, like, going into workout, I want to be crazy stimulated. So give me all the stimulants, because I'm going to go I'm gonna go expend that. But if, I want, if I'm taking in something like an energy drink or caffeine, and I'm just going to be on the podcast or about a day... That's a good point. I love to pair it with something that brings it down. And, you know what's funny like about that? that? If I go hard on the stimulants, I cannot do high rep workouts. It's mm. just too much. I have oh, to do wow. heavy, lower reps, aggressive, that kind of workout. Too many stimulants with high reps, and my I just too much. I, I'll, I'll lose my breath. Too, my heart's beating too much, and it just doesn't it doesn't work. I have to be more calm to kind of weather the storm. Dude, my levels are so high with caffeine that like actually the put best combo. Yeah, I, put, <laughs> I go completely the opposite direction. Yeah, like 
I actually take the pure to get me more focused now because like the caffeine just like keeps me going and energetic and awake. But it I don't sprinkles get, cocaine in it. Now. Yeah, it, it, but fun. now I have like more focus and, and memory recall when I add pure like every time. Yeah, it's, it's so much better. You know, I was I was uh, when I was doing this and, and working out and uh, you know I was like, oh cool, I could I could feel this you know compounding stimulant effect. I was you know kind of thinking. Remi- reminiscing on the the days of ephedra. I haven't taken ephedra in so long. I wonder if I would even feel that if I took it. Of course you would. Where would you find you it? Me? I don't even think you could buy it. Can you? Can you buy ephedra? Oh, you could buy drugs online. You could buy ephedra. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's a way. Oh, yeah. legally? Not, oh. I'm not going to go through your guy. Yeah, yeah. I, don't <laughs> yeah I, don't, I don't know if you can legally. I don't want to go through that guy. You yeah. sure you want ephedra? I got something else yeah, way no. better than that. Did no, you- I, I wonder. Actually, you can. Sudafed. Sudafed is chemical ephedra. Uh, it's pseudoephedrine. Yeah, that's why they make you give you. Well, they ID lock it up you, now. Yeah, yeah. You can only buy one at a time. Dude, how crazy is that? You go buy Sudafed. You have and, your ID. Oh yeah, you got ID. And we got to no track it. No more than once. Oh my god, dude, it's worse than than buying any almost anything else. Hey, did we did we bring up the uh, Hollywood Hollywood uh, Holly Hollywood Hollyfield Holly fight? Oh my god, you were way oh, off. Yeah, sorry, I don't yeah. think we talked about it actually. So I wanted to. I want. Did you? I guys, heard it sad. I heard oh, it sad. It was, dude. It was really sad, dude. So, okay, this was something we haven't, okay, we've talked about, right? We've gone back and forth and debated. You've admitted that you were wrong on this with the speculating on where it would go, like yeah. as far as, but here's a thing that I didn't think about um, that may slow this idea down of like all these crazy fights is the danger of them. And like so many people chasing money and just because yeah. you're popular or you're famous or people want to see the fight. And then they see it and something happens. Yes. And then know. something happens. Like, I think that's what everybody People thought. don't like to be reminded of how dangerous uh, certain sports are. They just don't. Like, you don't like watching football and seeing somebody's knee bend the wrong way. It makes people cringe a little bit. You don't uh, want to hear yeah. about brain trauma and you don't want to see boxers get really knocked out real bad or yeah, punched drunk. Real bad. It's, it, it it's makes weird. you not want to watch it's it. It's weird, though, because part of you does, right? Part of you wants to think of it very gladiator-esque. Yeah, but you don't want to see, like, you yeah, you see you, the guy get knocked nobody out. Nobody wants to wanna... see it happen. You want to know that it's possible. Yes. You want to know that it's dangerous. You could die. A bone could come a broken out of your leg you know, or sticking yeah, right. out of your leg. Like You want to know that because that's what makes it, I think, yeah, partially make, makes why, exciting. exciting, right? But then you don't actually want to see it happen. And then when it does, it makes you realize, like, okay. Yeah. And make, yeah, what you want bummer. is you want a good ending to the story. Like, uh, if you see someone get knocked out, real bad you want to you want to be able to see the person get up and shake the other person's hand Mm -hmm. you ever watch a fight where the guy gets knocked out doesn't get up and you the guy goes up and talks and oh yeah i won the fight and the guy's still knocked out yeah yeah. Yeah. it doesn't feel good to see that so i heard i heard holyfield didn't he looked it was it It was was hard to watch but you know how old he's old man how how old is holyfield doug will you look in his 50s I, is, or, or is he almost? He's, defi- he's definitely too old to be taking punches from a heavy hitter. I mean, that's how yeah. I feel. I mean, and, and oh, after yeah. you've been fifty-eight, bro, I'm sixty years old. Yeah. And do you know how that's old, crazy? Do you know how the old, first round he's getting do you, lumped? Do you realize how old fifty-eight is for somebody who has boxed professionally? Yeah, yeah. it's not like a fifty-eight-year-old. He's like eighty-eight. Yeah, mentally, probably. I would assume. I haven't even heard him talk. Does he sound like he's? Punch uh, he, drunk I mean, he's not. He doesn't sound as 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 bad as you know Tyson sounds. I mean, mm. so he's he's not. Yeah, but Tyson's bad. always kind of, you know, when he talks. Did like, you guys see his, his clip with Patrick Bet David? No. Where yeah. They, he yeah. said he said he'd be canceled, and he says I have my own plane, and then he goes he laughs for like a <laughs> minute straight. And I he's can't like the, even replicate his. laugh. I can't either. It's, it's like so, the weirdest. It's so bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have something like that. Wait, who's I, laughing like that? Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Oh it's like a hyena or He's, something. You can't say something like that. You just say white people can only do it because you and I, I'm Iranian, you're black. We can't say things but like that. I don't care. I don't, I don't care if I don't care. I got my own plane. Patrick Bed David, I've, I've been like, I've consuming his time. I really like his content. Like uh, his, yeah, he's uh, been doing some real yeah, good his interviews. platform valuetainment. He does a lot of great interviews. He brings on a lot of guests that he that disagree with him. Uh, he he does a great job interviewing. I really really like uh, his content that he puts out. You know, Mike Tyson's one of those guys that even if you're friends with him and you're cool and you joke around, you would never tease him too much because you think he's oh. gonna snap. You saw that. Did you ever see the, it was a roast of, I forget if it was like David Hasselhoff or whoever it was, but he was on the panel 
And uh, it, he goes up there and he's like kind of throwing his jokes out. But like they all were trying to like chip and like throw shots at him. And then realizing like, oh, he gets up and like you see them just oh, shit. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like he could kill you. Like, like you better watch what you say, dude. We're, we're going to go backstage at some point. Yeah. I don't want to do that. This is yeah. Iron Mike. Actually, you know? I like, think I did watch that. And you can even see some of the comedians poke fun at him. But they always ended with, I'm just kidding. I'm Mike. just, you know, you know yeah. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're the greatest all time. Hey, <laughs> oh, don't hurt me. This, yeah. Hey, by yeah. the way, what I'm about to say is not true. It's totally joking. Uh, okay, cool. All right, here we go. Yeah, dude. <laughs> That's what it's like. Hey, have you guys ever heard of um, a person named Freddy Overstegen? I got to pull up this information. Oh, Freddy Overstegen, yeah. You this, probably haven't. And that's no. okay because neither have I. But okay. I'm going to go over this Wikipedia. So this person, their birthday just happened. It's, this, it's a woman, okay? And she was part of the Dutch resistance mm. during the occupation of the Netherlands in World War II. So World War II, okay. you know, Nazi Germany is just obviously going in, taking places over and doing bad shit. Everybody knows that. This woman was a part of the, first of all, consider this, okay? I know everybody likes to fantasize and romanticize about how awesome they'd be in a situation like that. No, most everybody, 99.9% .9 of everybody watching this would be a massive pussy and you'd be scared and there, you would not, be the resistance because they would they kill people right in front of you. You'd be scared. So here's a woman who was a part of this resistance. That's her. During a time when the Nazis literally would execute you on the spot and kill you. And what did she do? She helped hid, uh, excuse me, hide Jews. She helped smuggle them out. She also would seduce German soldiers, take them into the woods like she was going to have sex with them, and then kill them herself. Herself? Herself. <laughs> Gangster like that. Wow. Gangster as fuck. How? Her and, How and, and another woman window. would do How, this. Stabbing or what would she do? How would Gun, you? stabbing. Like wow. She, yes, dude. Wow. Uh, so is, How's there not a documentary a about this? There dude. should be a documentary about this woman. Yeah. Like a real yeah. badass, you yeah. know, to do something like that, to have the How did you come across this story? So I saw an article that, because her she died uh, a few years ago, but her oh. birthday was, uh, let me see when her birthday, her birthday came up and it was uh. something like, uh, September 6th is her birthday. There was a kind of a similar story, but it was about, uh, it was these Russian, uh, women pilots. So they, I guess this, this one lady, um, was like created, um, you know, her own, uh, squad and, and basically they were just like terrorizing Nazis and they were afraid of them because they would like fly uh, over and just like demolish like these uh, these camps of of of, uh, of Nazis. And it, of course, this is all passed on from like drunk history. I watched that show. And they were like going over all this stuff, and it was hilarious. But it was like, oh wow, is this real? And it's real. And it was like pretty cool. Like th these stories. Uh, you know, that you, you find out later, like these badass women that just like would do what a lot of the other pilots you, wouldn't do. You know, some of the most feared uh, people in, I don't know, war, I guess you would want to say, are female spies. Because one of the greatest weaknesses uh, among men, especially egotistical men, is an attractive woman. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's the female spies are very uh, effective at getting men to tell them secrets and luring them and to lower our guard. You feel safe. Ah, oh, it's a girl. We're going to go in the woods, just me and her. I'm, I'm going to bang right now. And then they'll kill your ass. Well, yeah. So they're very dangerous. One might say women are pretty good at manipulating too. So. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. They're smarter. They got a little bit of an edge on <laughs> men for sure. Yeah, think. dude. Yeah. That wouldn't work on a woman. Hey, you want to come yeah. to the woods alone? Yeah. We'll make love. She's like, Fuck the, no, the night I'm witches. You. Thank you, Doug. That's what their their name was. The night witches. Oh, from, the night witches. Wow. Yeah. The daring female. Where are the doc? Where's the movies out on these chicks? I dude? know they <laughs> should make a movie about this too. It would instead be awesome. of instead of taking old classics and throwing women in it to think it's going to be better, like. Ghostbusters, well, that's stupid. Do this. This is true, real shit. Yeah, that's, exactly. a, that's the stuff that I want to see. Exactly. I wonder if there's already something in the works. I wouldn't be surprised if there's something that's already being done with it. You know? I mean, it's a true story. Yeah. You know? Did you guys see, uh, by the way, I might just keep doubling and tripling down on the MMA talk because, you know, <laughs> because fuck you. <laughs> Atta boy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Tell me what oh, I can't get. Cringe about. on fuck this, you. <laughs> sucker. <laughs> Uh, did you see Conor uh, McGregor? God damn! What a, uh, did you see him with uh, with Machine Gun Kelly? So you just like like hit a drink. And so okay, you guys know who Machine Gun it? Kelly is who got into the battle rap with Eminem a couple years ago. Yeah, Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. And he's like this wiry, you know, looks like he's, he's six foot tall, two, three, like one hundred and thirty pound yeah. dude. <laughs> and I don't know the backstory. Supposedly. 
uh, Connor was walking through and supposedly uh, uh, Machine Gun Kelly pushed him. Now, I didn't see, now there's lots of clips. I watched all the clips to see like if you could catch that. But like Connor like takes a swing at him, dude. And they had to separate all of them and and making a big old deal. So now here's the thing. This is like, and I wanted to talk about this after the Evander thing because, you know, is this going to be, are we going to really start to see this fake drama stuff all the time? He's he's famous. You know, Machine Gun Kelly's famous. He's got a, and Connor, everyone's going to want to see him get knocked right. out. And so they stage all these, you know, at a big event like the VMAs, they stage a big bullshit, you know. It smells that way. It man. does smell that way to me. And I feel like so many people are doing it right yeah, now. Yeah. It's obnoxious. Until people get sick of it. I, McGregor completely lost my respect when he swung at that old guy. At the bar, oh, like yeah, you're yeah. just he's a you know what he's acting like right now. He's acting like a, a spoiled thug. Like you, you you're making all this money, you're real successful. What are you doing, bro? You have no honor. Relax. You're acting and that, and and the fact that now he's gotten his ass kicked a couple times, it even looks even more ridiculous that you're out there pissed off. Did you see that meme of him going or certain getting? I forget who posted. I wish I'd give him credit, but there's like someone posted this of like it might have been Mike Dolce. I don't know. And it was uh, like his cycle of like, you know, talks all kinds of shit, you know, hypes fight up, gets a fight, gets his ass kicked, Does humble again. humble for two weeks, start cycle again. See? Like, that's kind of like totally. his, that's his MO right now is like, he's he's so good though at hyping, hyping his shit up. Yeah, he, but doesn't he, he loses that after he keeps losing at some right. point. You don't want Well, care. I think that's, I mean, I think ever. I mean, of course, everybody got roped into the last one, but you know, you <sighs> lose enough times consistently and people are over it. People will be like, Plus Whatever. there's a part of me, I get the business side of it and I'm the entertainment side and I respect that. I think that's that's a part of it. Then there's the martial artist side of it. I've been doing martial arts and I don't I haven't done it in a long time, but I grew up doing it as a kid and I did it as a young adult. And martial arts represent uh honor, respect and discipline with fighting. It's not mm -hmm. the same as fighting out in the street and kicking someone's ass. A big part of martial arts has always been the art aspect of it and the discipline. And so when it gets goes too far, yeah, so yeah, but it got distorted it by entertainment. Yeah, because I was just entertainment gonna, is what sells. So. I know, but at yeah, some you point, just, I, it's not, I, I, the purity of all sports has been done. Tarnished. It's bastardized. Yeah. Yeah. It's already been bastardized. And know, it's not. And you know, and I would never judge someone of doing. I mean, he's playing the game. Like in that, and that's your, I know, but he, when he went, when he hit that old guy at the bar, come on, dude, who's that guy? Some old guy. Listen, it, it, to me, it's it's not that much it's different. Part of his loose cannon. It's not nature, that much different you know? than in our space where we have to like we have to spend. We 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 pr we our goal always is to, to provide content that adds tremendous value. But unfortunately, after we do that, we have to sit down and think of a clever title that makes people click on it. And yeah, sometimes it has to be clickbaity just to get your attention so we can then deliver value yeah, to you. Yeah, I know, I know. And we don't like that, but it's that's it, we're fighting fire with fire, mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of how I feel about someone like that. Like, I'm, I would never shame them that much because that's his fucking craft. His job is to punch people in the face and get paid as much money as he possibly can. And he's one of the best. Yeah, but you hit an old guy in well, the bar. Well, I'm not, yeah. well, yeah. I'm not, was, sorry, I'm not defending that. That was yeah. inexcusable for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. when you lose my, that's when you lose Yeah, my yeah, but that was a long time. I mean, he did that uh, before his proper 12 and stuff came. Isn't that when it was over? Wasn't it like yeah, the guy, yeah. guy said his whiskey was in, shit about his whiskey? Yeah, yeah. And he goes and punches him like, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah, what's wrong dude. with it? I mean, All right. Do you ever wonder though too if some uh, some of that stuff is, is staged for marketing reasons? Like, to get even bad, even bad publicity. <laughs> Drink my whiskey and you'll punch hey, an old guy in the face. Even bad publicity so, hey, is I'm good publicity. Right so maybe, I mean, for all you and I know, I mean, if you think he's that much of a master at uh, marketing, advertising himself, you tell a guy like, "Hey, listen, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you." 10 grand cash under the table. I want you to stir it up about we're going to create and like you tell and nobody knows but the two of them and then it goes viral all over the place. You're hated by millions but then you got the people are talking Speaking about you. Speaking of which, there was a story mm. I read a long time ago that this guy paid two other guys to pretend mug him that when was, he was what, with a, with a, a woman. Oh, I thought you were talking about the No, I'm not uh, talking about that other What's idiot. he Smollett? Jesse Smollett? Smollett? Yeah. Yeah. That's so stupid. No, that was a different. <laughs> That's so dumb. This is just Complete, almost as dumb, right? Yeah. But this, this guy literally paid two guys to pretend to mug him and his girlfriend and then allow him to kick their asses. That's smart. In front of his girlfriend. I know, dude. That's not dumb. That's smart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, some shit I would do. He's hey, just say, dude, trying to impress like, this chick. It's like, dude, this is gonna give me action for like, yeah, dude, at least for the sure. next three months. Hey, this is going back to hey, dumb hey. things. <laughs> dumb things men do for sure. She's just like, I bet you she told him like three nights before they haven't had sex yet. She's like, you know what turns me on? Yeah, is seeing a man defend his woman or yeah. something. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, like, fuck, hmm. I'm yeah. trying to get this, dude. I'll yeah. do whatever. Hey, you, g give me your purse. <laughs> Hold on, right here, honey. Let me go take <laughs> care of this. Real Let quick. me handle this. But there's babe. two of them. I know. Don't worry about it. I got that. You know how much that'll backfire. 
fire in the future if they stayed yeah. together. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck you. My husband will yeah. kick your ass. No, exactly. She'll yeah. start getting him in fights, you know, like start <laughs> yeah, picking yeah. on some big guy at the no, bar. No, honey, like, honey. Yeah, my husband will kick your ass. Remember, remember my shoulder hurts. I, my shoulder's uh, not feeling it. Just, just keep quiet. Like, We're honey, fine. Let's go over. sore from the last bout. <laughs> Let's go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway. All right. Speaking of clickbaity stuff, uh, do you guys know what the best age is for sex, sexual satisfaction? For men or women? Both. What? Yeah. So generally That's speaking, different. Both. Probably older. No, they picked it. They picked women. I would. Women. I would say thirty-five. Men, twenty-five. No, they did a huge study, uh, men and women, no, and they found that the best. Fucking. They found study. that generally 40 the best years age. Old. Yeah, it's in the forties, mid forties, mid forties. Men ding. and women report the best sex of their life. Generally speaking. Yeah. Right in their mid forties. I mean, okay. So there's some things that add up and make sense to that, right? Maybe you're not at your sexual prime as far as how much you're having it, but you've probably refined the skill and yeah. figured out what you like. Confident, you, you know yeah, yeah, everything that you like. I mean, at that point, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you're confident in it. And I mean, let's be honest. Uh, if you're ever gonna get hit on by a, a couple at a fucking vacation spot. It's going to be in their forties. <laughs> it ain't going to be, you know, <laughs> you know, that's when they're confident. That's when they're like, we know what we like, and yeah, whatever. But I thought that was very interesting. So a lot of people listening and watching right now, like, you, you know, you think you're having good sex, it'll get better. Just wait. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's really cool. Or stuff, the right? guys that are always going you try for like, really young year girls, old. telling them like, listen, it gets better when you go start going up in age. Like I remember telling my buddies that they used to tease me because I always liked older women. I liked older women when I was in my twenties. Like they always dated like ten years older than I was. Ten years older? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It was I was always dating. Wait, what was the biggest age gap between you and the and a woman that? Well, you were? that ten, ten to twelve, probably. How, so how old are you, and how old are they? Mm. So you're like twenty five. Uh, early like... twenties. She's in her thirties. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So always like uh, you know, and how maybe much did you learn a lot? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> Great yeah. student. Yeah, no, I was a, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. As cocky well, as I am, I'm very humble too. Hey, after I'm, after well, she, I'm open to learning. After she's done rocking your world, she makes you a sandwich, cuts it in half <laughs> yes, dude. in the middle. Here you go, honey. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I gave you some goldfish too, so make sure you snack on these. That's oh, right, dude. Right. Yeah. Have a good day. You know? <laughs> snack pack. <please>. Thank you. <laughs> snack pack. <laughs> you know, uh, here's something kind of neat. I saw a uh, popping up right now. I don't know how much you guys care about this. I pay attention to this. Um, uh, the, the what's going on with like betting, right? Gambling is like exploding because all these states are are legalizing it. And I bought stock in uh, DraftKings. I bought stock in uh, Penn, which is Barstool, who the, they're the company that bought them. Are they doing well. Uh, yeah, I've done I've done decent on both those. I okay. mean, nothing crazy, but I, I've done I've done pretty well. I bought them uh, quite a while ago. But uh, what I'm not happy about that I'm seeing because they were kind of the leaders in the space. Like DraftKings is kind of uh, leading the fantasy gambling uh, thing. I, I like Penn because of Barstool Sports. But now I see uh, MGM, and so what you're seeing is now so MGM has their own uh, basically betting you know online betting uh, platform now too. So I oh, think the it's pros gonna, now are getting involved. Yeah, yeah, yes. So I mean, you're getting pros, big money behind oh, behind this is that. Gonna, the market is gonna this is gonna advance very quickly. Yes. Wow, that's exciting. And, and you're seeing see. commercials on like big, you know, I don't know what what I was watching. I was watching some some game. Oh, I think it was Monday Night Football. Now you know what's exciting about this, Adam, is that uh, reminds me a bit of the marijuana market because mm -hmm. a lot of the arguments against uh, loosening up the laws on marijuana was. It's going to be worse. More people are going to be addicted to pot. It's going to cause more problems. Of course, the argument in support of it was it reduces the black market. There's going to be you know less problems there because people in the black market handle their their issues without police, without courts, but tends to be through violence, illegal activity. Now that marijuana has been light is it been you know legalized or the laws have been loosened, what we've actually found is both people are there's right in both. More people smoke weed than ever before, but also the black market shrank <clears throat> and we're seeing tax revenue. See, I would challenge stuff. that though. I don't think you think that, the conversion of black market going into no. I think the first thing he said. I think mm. that I think just as many people smoke weed. I think just people are more okay about admitting it now. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I was so blown yeah, was away undercover. when I first got in the space. I don't know. Still, I've, I've, I've seen lots of studies on very, it. Very very. Well, yeah. Well, what are this? What are they? They fucking surveys. You know, asking people. I mean, that's the best they, you could do. Right. Okay. So if you're a, a doctor, okay, and it's illegal just 15, 20 years ago, and a survey asked you, do you smoke weed? What do you answer on that survey? Yeah. Today, when you legally can do it in the state you're in, and that same person gets asked, 
Did you, did you change because of the laws, or now you're willing to yeah. admit? Well, you. you I mean, the re, okay, I'm well, I, now. Mind you, you're speaking from survey studies. I'm speaking from experience of running a, a club, and I, I was blown away by the how many lawyers, oh, and, and doctors, and church going, yeah, you know, yeah. straight narrow people, and just people you just would not think smoke weed would come in and pick up their stuff. So I, I think you make a good point. I think that's definitely part of it. But you can't ignore the fact that there's a lot of people that wouldn't would avoid buying it because they don't want to go through the black market. Agreed. Mm-hmm. The stigma is a certain mm-hmm. level. The stigma has definitely changed. So I, I, I have to believe that you're going to see, anytime you increase the accessibility of things, change the stigma, you're going to see more use. Well, I also think there's going to be always be an initial wave because- it's that's new and like try it. Yeah. I mean, if, if we, like we said right now, okay. If all of a sudden we said cocaine's fully legal for sure, more people will be, well, no, it's legal. I've always wanted to kind of try GDP it out. grew 10% this year. I mean, yeah, well, it would, it would initially <laughs> grow right away because yeah. everybody would be like, okay, now it's accepted. So all those people that were on the fence or maybe people that couldn't get it before now go do it. But then I think it kind of levels off after you see the addictive properties well, and the negative side of it. I think that's kind of the natural evolution of allowing. So I mean, I think we're all maybe we're all maybe I'm not sure I, on the same page of like, I don't think any of that stuff should be illegal. I think the yeah. fact that you make yeah. it illegal, there's more danger in the black market. And I think the same amount of people would do it or wouldn't do it. Yeah, I, I really do. I agree with you. I, I think uh, I, I'm not like <laughs> pro like nothing, no regulation. You know, kids could, you know, whatever. But like you look at Portugal, Portugal decriminalized all drugs, all dr- any drug decriminalized for small amounts. Now decriminalized is not the same as legal, right? So yeah. you can't go to the store in Portugal and buy heroin or cocaine. But if you get caught by a police officer yeah. with a personal it use, pretty much, yeah, it pretty much the, protects you from using if you want to, but it keeps you from being a dealer, which I think yeah. that's, a, I, I like that. I and, like that And regular. they show so far that it's actually reduced overdoses. Sure. Reduced, and it's increased the amount of people willing to get treatment because there's not as much of a stigma. So I agree. I agree with that. So with this thing with betting and, and gambling, we'll probably see more people in the gambling market, but I also think you're probably going to see less of the shit that happens behind closed doors type of gambling because it's going to yeah. be so much more Especially accessible. Sports betting, yeah. And I'm sure the, the, the tax collector is going to love that. You know how much money they don't make on gambling that happens at the black market? Oh, yeah. I wonder how much money they, they could possibly generate. Yeah, I, w- I wonder how many people... I mean, I still use my bookie, right? I've been Because I've been using them for so long. Um, I can can I say that Doug? Am I okay? No, I probably not. Yeah. Hey, it's I have to a you. friend You're, that your still body. uses his. <laughs> I have a friend who still uses. I like his it when book. you talk. For He's other a bit people. of a librarian. We call him a bookie. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like yes. when you talk for other people. Yeah, Adam. yeah. You know anyway. what I mean. My friend is still using. The same bookie that he's been using forever, uh, even though that you, you know you can use all these new platforms. Bro, you literally can't help yourself. Like you have no lying filter. He's honest. It's probably gonna get me in dude. trouble. Yeah. Uh, 100% hundred percent's gonna get yeah, you in yeah, trouble one day. But that's uh, what I love about you. you just <laughs> you can ask Adam anything, let it fly. and what'll come out before he can filter it is the truth. Yeah. And yeah. then afterwards he'll try to filter Every time. it. Every time. Yeah. Hey, did you guys? Yeah. Uh, I, there's a an interesting trial that I'm watching right now. So these mRNA type vaccines obviously the most one the one we're most familiar with is the Pfizer. covid vaccine it's a new technology very interesting and i said this in the beginning uh it, as we learn more potentially this technology could really transfer into some interesting spaces what is it for example the the, the way that they work right is they'll inject a type of an rna instruction into your cells creating something else it's a new technology in essence what they're doing in this new trial, genetic treatment, they're testing a cancer vaccine. And so far in the animal trials, it's working. Really? No. Yes. Wow. How is this not everywhere? Talk well, about. well, it's, it's, I, it's, I it's in it's phase two phase. or phase three. Yeah. And oftentimes you see phase two, phase three trials look promising. Well, pull this up, Doug. I want to see this. Like, what, so what is the, I mean, what, how, so what's what the percentage? Do, like, what are we seeing? Uh, it's very effective. I don't remember the exact numbers. I'll send it to Doug because I have, I saved wow. it. Wow. But essentially what they'll do is they'll identify your cancer. And then be able to create a vaccine. Now, for is you. it because of COVID and us having to to accelerate this and make this happen that this is now uh, they've started to do the research for cancer and that was some, wasn't something they were doing already or no, was this, this already was some, something? This was something that's going on. So this is okay. So I'll read the title of this here. Um, it's uh, uh, bio uh, BioNTech RMNA cancer treatment moved to human trials after huge success from mice. So it did so well with animals. Then now they're moving to one of the last phases, which is to do it with uh, with humans. 
and it showed tremendous promise. I didn't hear what you, what was, did you give a percentage or you just said? No, I can look at it right, I'm I'm kind of going through right now to try and see. Um, I think we'd have to find the exact study to see, but nonetheless, it was. Can you explain too? Oh, here we go, here we go. Uh, They, they, in this particular trial with 20 mice with melanomas, very aggressive forms of cancer. Okay. 17 of them from this mRNA, 17 of them effectively shrank their tumors to nothing within 40 days. So Ooh. out of 20 with an aggressive cancer, 17 tumor gone Wow! from this particular wow, uh, that's treatment. Crazy. And, and it inhibited the growth <clears throat> of these tumors in other parts of the body as well. Which- so can, can you explain this one and then also like the COVID, because they're not technically, in the COVID vaccine is not technically a vaccine, right? It's technically like a... It goes in and it changes DNA code. Is that am I? No, I it being described it? as like a genetic treatment. That's, well, yeah, that it changes DNA. No, yes, but it's a it's a vaccine in the sense that you take it to build immunity. So an mRNA therapy would be you already have cancer. So I I mistakenly called it a vaccine. It's a therapy, but with the same technology. So a therapy would be like, oh, you already have COVID. Let's give you this, and then it helps fight it. A vaccine is we give you this now. You build up immunity. Therefore, later on, you can fight. The That's the own. definition of what makes it a vaccine, and it's not this DNA thing that everybody keeps. Like I don't. Yes, loosely. That's loosely the the definition. And correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I feel uh, like you didn't help people me at out all there. <laughs> <laughs> I hate, hey, I feel just as confused. <laughs> hey, let me explain something to you. It's it's this much depth in subjects I have. It's a lot of subjects. So stop back to me. The deep shit. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Wait well, minute, I don't so know. I don't know. Work? And I'm not gonna pretend like I know. So I thought maybe you might you might yeah. have a little. But bit this more. is really cool because it, this could. You know, the, Cancer, and I, I know a lot about cancer. I'm not a doctor on it at all, but I know a lot about it because uh, I've studied a lot because it's been personal to me. And it's so hard. I used to think that, oh, there's a treatment out there. They don't want to know. Yeah. Oh, it's big pharma. No, man. Each cancer is different. It's cells. And whatever kills cells kills all your cells usually. Yeah. Very hard to, 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 to treat. Very hard to kill and find. It's a very complicated problem. Now, have you heard much um, to, and, and this is like something I just read about like loosely, so I don't know all the details of it, but they were actually like experimenting like with other viruses to inject people with sometimes to treat certain viruses. So they would take like, uh, I don't know if it was like um, like a herpes or a, yeah yeah what? And, and like inject it to to, oh. to to build like a different type of antibody. Well, that's the Johnson and Johnson uh, vaccine. Is that? So they use. So if you do Johnson Johnson, you have herpes now. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking scared every like, no, like a couple dude. million people right now. That's why they pulled it off the shelf. Hey, don't worry, you can only you can only get it once. So itchy all of a sudden. No, here's what yeah. it is. It is burns. They use a a vax. They use a, another virus that's harmless. They use that as a carrier. Then they inject into this virus what they want to be replicated in your body by using a harmless virus vector. Okay, so what. Uh, what the Johnson and Johnson vaccine does is they use, I, don't, I think it's an adenovirus. I don't know if I'm saying it right. It's an adenovirus vector. So it's basically a harmless virus. It's not going to make you sick. And they take that and then they put in it this spike protein that they want to be reproduced in your body that your vo- body will then identify if you get COVID type of deal. So different than mRNA, mRNA tells your cells to make this spike protein, which then you build an immunity it to. It communicates which then, with your cells. So yeah. wild. I know. So it's very... So- very Out there stuff. Very no, I, not to shit on your study or anything, but it would, I wouldn't be me if I didn't do that. Uh, you know <laughs> we what? Respect it now. Yeah. Right, what? Yeah. Right. So, so, I know I piss some people, but some people appreciate it. Uh, what? What percentage of um, uh, mice studies actually uh, make it to human studies and are effective? Very few make it to human studies, and then when they do make it to few, to human studies, very few make it past. So, and there's been a lot of promise when it comes to cancer. So it's fun to speculate and yeah, talk yeah, about a cool my study, right, but yeah. the reality of it is it Doesn't has always a one and maybe a 10 chance of it. Probably even less. Oh now, here's a, here's what's exciting about this. What's exciting about this is this is a completely new technology and it's showing a lot of promise. So a lot of scientists are excited about it. You know, one of the problems, by the way, with, with treatments is it costs so much money to go through the FDA process. I think it's like a hundred million dollars. Yeah, I or saw more. a documentary on that one yeah, time. It's, it's crazy. It's like 10 years, a hundred million dollars, maybe even more than that of research and investment to figure out a new treatment. And so here you are, pharma company, and I think it might even be more than a hundred million. I think I'm lowballing it, but let's say you have all this money, like, okay, we want to figure out 
a new cancer treatment. And then you'd sit down with your scientists or whatever, and they say, okay, oh, here we go. How much does it cost? Uh, a million. phase one, two, three clinical trials, three, 13, 20 million. Yeah, over the course of 10 years, it's uh, it's typically far more than that, right? When yeah, I, I, I saw something that confirmed what yours. I saw a documentary on this, and it talked yeah. about That's the, one trial the 10 period, ten year period. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, talk about totally, uh, you know, ha having to have a monopoly in order to do that. Like, yeah. you, I mean, so it's, a it's, handful of companies can even afford so it's to a, it's, In essence, okay, tens of millions to as much as 100 million, let's just say, right? Yeah. So what you let's say you're sitting down with your scientists. You're like, okay, we want to figure out a cancer treatment. You got scientists over here saying, you know what? We have this theory. It's a new kind of treatment. We think it might work. If it does, it'll be a blockbuster. And then you got this person over here saying, you know, chemo is proven. We're going to tweak it a little bit and make it less harsh and more effective. And you got $100 million in 10 years to invest. You're betting your capital. Yeah. You want to do this brand new, like totally risky, probably not going to work treatment, or this one that's based off of technology that has got market viability, has got some effectiveness, yeah, however yeah. bad it is. That's what ends up happening. So what do we end up with? New forms of opiates for pain relief, new forms of chemo. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's the problem with this whole process. That's one of the challenges with with having all these regulations that make it so expensive yeah. you know, to create- uh, This is a terrible treatment. parallel, but they totally do that in the movie industry. <laughs> Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, like what, it's 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 either it's a proven concept that we're going to funnel money into because we just tweak it or add like a different cast of people yep. uh, because we know we can predict like box office that's records. That's why so much stuff is trash. Exactly. There's it. nothing original anymore. Original, original stuff yeah. that's so hey, different. It's so speaking, hard to find it. Speaking of original, so NCI, right? A uh, company we work with. Oh, does, I got them tonight. Oh, you're on there tonight? All yeah. Right. So they do coaching for, tra for coaches and trainers, helping them be successful. And they're very unique in their approach. Very effective. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bullshit in Charlotte. This is why we took so long to work with anybody. It's because there's so many people preying on new coaches and trainers, giving them money and actually giving them no value. Dude, did you see what they're going to give away right now? No. So uh, I want to make sure I get this right, Doug. If you could scroll down, there it is. I heard it was like ten thousand so, dollars. So or this is a a, a training worth of coaching. So this is a training and coaching seminar, essentially or course that they normally charge a lot of money for. Which essentially what you're doing when you go in there is they're teaching you the framework that will work best for your specific coaching business, which is, this is a big deal. So they're going to teach you your specific framework. Do this. This is going to work best for you. Here's your offer. Here's your, how you're going to ask for it. Here's what you're going to do. Normally they charge a ton for this. Free. They're now you missed free. out because you, I don't remember where you had to go, but we all went and hung out with Jason afterwards oh, yeah, and had yeah. lunch with us and we were just talking business and- um, I didn't know that. So he has kind of like a high end, like mastermind group thing that he does uh, annually where he takes on only a select amount of people and it's, it's a higher purchase price. But one of the sickest parts that I didn't know he does this is the people have to pay half, uh, half of it up front. And he does not make them pay the rest of uh, pay the rest until he's delivered on them making ten thousand dollars a month. Yeah, mm -hmm. how fucking sick is that? Yeah, well, that's I mean, really it's a smart. Great guarantee. That's, I love I like that. that. I love that too because it's like one of the things I don't like about mastermind groups is this. You know, you're ninety percent of them in there are never going to reach that potential, and they're just pumping their money in this oh, you know pipe right. dream that it, they're going to go. taking their money. It's yeah, and so I just I, I've never been. Able, I would never go really sleep at night doing that, but doing that really puts a, a lot of pressure on him to deliver. Yep. You know, if you, cause then you ain't get, you ain't making the rest of your money. If you can't get these people up to that, uh, up that's to that right. 10 K. And I think that's really cool. I didn't know that he did that. Yep. Hey, thanks for listening to the show real quick. Head over to one of our partners, drink forward slash mind pump. So drink O L I P O P.com forward slash mind pump. They make sodas like this one right here. This is, Classic grape. No joke, this tastes like the grape soda that I would drink as a kid sometimes when my mom decided to let us drink that stuff that purple drink. good for us. But here's the crazy thing, okay? This entire can of classic grape soda, 45 calories, no artificial sweeteners. Here's the best part. There are components and ingredients in this particular drink that are good for gut health. So this is actually a health drink that tastes like the sodas I grew up drinking when my mom didn't care too much. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Anyway, go check them out. Good stuff, low calorie, no artificial anything, good for your gut. Drinkolipop.com forward slash mind pump. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Thomas from Virginia. Hey, what's up, Thomas? How can we help you? Hi, good afternoon, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. 
Um, quick summary on uh, a little background. Um, bottom line, I have a, I feel like I have a, I'm a poster child of a, uh, what you guys talk about often having a, a very slow to almost no metabolism. Um, basically the last year, partly due to uh, COVID, et cetera, just gained a lot of weight, gained, um, a lot of, uh, unwanted body fat. And I've just been, uh, really trying to cut that down. I've done a couple other workout programs, um, until I discovered y'all's podcast. And, um, I have gone through anabolic and it's definitely working. Um, I want to say that for sure, but I am basically at a point where I'm trying to increase my calories. Um, but bottom line, my, my metabolism is just, uh, really slow and uh, really starting to get under my skin. Thomas, have you have you ever done like a, a bulk where you were trying to actually gain muscle for an extended period of time? Or have you been kind of doing the, I see you've done HIT and you've done the whole 30 and you've ran, it looks like you're eating 1,200 to 1,500 calories. But have you ever tried to actually build and put on weight uh, for an extended period of time, or have you pretty much been trying to run a deficit whenever you've been focused on getting in shape? Um, I've definitely always done the deficit thing. Um, I am currently trying to, to increase my calories. Um, and I, I mean, honestly, it's our, like my wife and I are both counting macros right now. And I thought I was doing great even yesterday. And I look at my little counter and I, I literally was at 1500 and just stuffed to the brim. But, um, no, I have not um, specifically done a bulk. Okay. You said stuff to the brim. So you're finding that eating 1,500 calories and you can't eat more because you're, you get too full eating them? Uh, yes. Um, pretty much, yes. Um, you know, partly, again, poster child here. Uh, earlier this year, did the Whole30. Tried keto last year. Um, intermittent fasting I was doing, I think, earlier this year. I was... I could go without eating until honestly dinner. I'd do like a smaller meal at lunch, but no breakfast and skip. So, you know, since I've been doing anabolic, I've really focused on trying to do three meals a day and, and fit in the snacks. But, um, so yes, I've had some days where I'm over 2000 calories, but those are the days where I, I do feel, I do feel stuffed. Okay. Well, I mean, I want to be clear. There's nothing necessarily wrong with a metabolism that runs off of, lower calories. Now, now we have we'd have to look into more detail. Is this due to certain factors or the health issues? But if you're otherwise healthy and you're eating lowish calories and you feel okay and your strength is going up, there isn't really necessarily a need to try to push it as high as you possibly can unless you're finding that it's hard for you to get leaner at those low calories and you don't want to go any lower. In other words, if you're eating 1,500 to 2,000 calories, you're like, you know, that satisfies me, but I do want to get leaner. But I also, if I eat more than that, it just feels like too much food. That's a bit of a different strategy. If that's the case, is now is that the case with you, Thomas? Or are you like, look, 15 to 200 to 2,000, too low, I'm hungry, mm -hmm. and that's the challenge. Like, what's the issue here? Uh, no, I'm definitely satisfied and, 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 and you know, pretty full. Um, okay. Like, specifically the last two weeks. Okay. Maybe because my wife started doing it um, as well. I, I, I was I've been trying to get honestly up above you know twenty eight hundred calories, um, and so far I've met that like once. Yeah, no, no. Take <laughs> I, take take your time, especially since your goal is to has been to get leaner. Take your time and allow the workouts to stimulate your appetite. Unless you're feeling challenged by eating only fifteen hundred to two thousand calories, I wouldn't worry so much about pushing the calories as much as I would by sending the right signal to your body to build muscle and get stronger. That will start to typically get your appetite to go up as well just to fuel your body. The other thing I would do is, is if you have any symptoms or signs of hormone imbalances or testosterone imbalances, get that checked and see where your testosterone levels are. Sometimes low testosterone can cause that. Yeah. Now, that being said, strength training done properly – pretty much reliably will raise testosterone as well. So, And you've been going through anabolic phase one and you haven't really noticed much of an appetite increase? Well, so yes, let me dive in there a little bit. Um, I have noticed an appetite increase and one of the best gains um, 
that I've had is like actually feeling hungry in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, so here's where I'm a little mystified and I didn't put this in my question, but I did, uh, I'm I'm actually starting anabolic again, but I did, you know, uh, all nine weeks. I did the, the three days a week program. Um, and I gained 12 pounds. Um, I didn't, I mean, I wasn't trying to weigh myself, but I weighed myself before and after and shot right up. So, Again, I was I'm slightly mystified how I could get that. <laughs> how you with the, uh, how you gained twelve calories pounds that I was eating? Well, I mean, well, yeah, yeah it was not, it's not fat. And I know it's not fat. Oh well, that's it, that's yeah, freaking like, great. You're yeah. kicking ass, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, if your strength did your strength go up a lot? Yeah, it was insane. Yeah, okay, but you're dude. You're actually, on, yeah. you're actually doing probably really fucking good, bro. You're on the yeah. right track. I would I would stay on that track. Follow your appetite. What we don't want to do, the reason why we encourage people to eat more and speed up their metabolism uh, is is usually because the person struggles with the calories that they're eating to maintain their body weight. Like, my gosh, it's so hard for me to stay at this you know X amount of calories. I'm always hungry. In that particular scenario, we want to try and get your metabolism faster because it makes it a lot easier. But if you feel good and you feel satisfied and you're getting stronger and you're building muscle... Let that be your guide. That's your I sweet would, spot right there. Yeah, I would just keep doing that. You're kicking ass. Okay. And, and this is your second round now going through MAPS Anabolic. After doing that, I'd go MAPS Performance or MAPS Aesthetic, which is kind of taking you up to even uh, another level. I do I do think, though, that your your head is in the right place of, of wanting to. I know Sal's saying that you don't necessarily need to increase calories, but you're a 40-year-old male at two hundred over 200 pounds nutritionally i think you it would be advantageous to get your caloric intake up so your body is getting mm-hmm. all the micro macronutrients pretty hard to get the macro and micronutrients that the body needs with only 1500 calories yeah. for a 230 pound man especially if he's got a good amount of lean body mass so your your idea of wanting to increase i think is a smart strategy but to sal's point I, I, you don't need to stress about it so much that you need to push calories right. and allow the work. Like you, you, you get, you hit a good workout. Let's say you do a phase one MAPS anabolic workout and the next day you wake up and you're hungry. That's an awesome sign. Feed that, feed it, feed it, give it the calories it wants. And then maybe you have a, a next day is a trigger day and you just, your appetite's not roaring and you only eat about 1500 calories. That's okay. Don't stress about that. When it tells you that you're, you're hungry and you need calories, yeah. feed it, just make good choices. Feed it. And uh, it sounds like, oh, well, I don't know. Know if I guess I'm speculating, but uh, did you typically skip breakfast before? Was that like part of your day? Yeah, routine? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that, like yeah. I said, I've had to I've had to change my my lifestyle pretty drastically, which is I, I know that's part of the process. But yeah, I was never eating breakfast. Oh breakfast. yeah, you start making that a priority, and you start feeding yourself because your body's obviously you know like giving you those signals like feed me. So you know you start making that a priority and just you know watch how that sort of snowballs from there yeah i just just really if you send the right signals if you're comfortable right now with your calories in the sense that you don't feel like you're you're oh my gosh i need to eat more feed your body what it needs eat good right so pick good uh, make good choices eat the adequate amount of protein send the signal to build muscle as you get stronger you you should see your appetite start to increase uh, along the way. Now I do I do want to address something that uh, it w- does put you at a disadvantage when you're at this low of calories. So although it's okay and what everyone's saying is right, <clears throat> here's where it can get really frustrating for someone like you who has an ultimate goal of losing more body fat and your everything's going pretty well right now. You have less room for error, and what I mean by that is. You know, let's say Justin, who eats closer to 3,500 calories a day, decides, hey, it's Saturday. I'm going to have two beers and a slice of pizza because it's Saturday and I want to enjoy some football or whatever, right? It's so, party. So he, so he <laughs> eats an additional, you know, 400 calories that, you know, aren't really that beneficial for him that he normally wouldn't. Well, that percentage of his maintenance of 3,500 is a, is a fraction compared to what 400 bad calories say, you know, quote unquote, bad calories are for you. So you do have, and that's probably, uh, you know, why I think it's a good idea that you're trying to increase calories over time and build the metabolism up so that you can have some balance in your life, have days like that occasionally, and it doesn't feel like it all sticks on you and you gain body fat. So it is important to know that that is one of the disadvantages of, of having the calories so low. Even if you're satisfied and you're fine, it gives you less room for error if you eat outside your meal plan. Yeah, but you're, but you're on the right track. You just give it some time. Yeah, you're doing good, bro. Slowly, you're going to see, you'll, you'll probably see it start to increase 
over time. St- strength gains are the best gauge. That is the best gauge. If you're stronger and you're getting, you're, you're doing a lot of things right. It's hard to get consistently stronger and do a lot of things wrong. It's yep. very, very hard to do that. And something that might help too, uh, mentally for you, if you haven't done this already is to, you know, pick and get one of those, um, you know, digital scales that do the body fat test or go to, if you have a local like supplement place that normally has them or a gym and use that. And again, don't get hung up on whatever the initial number is, but use that as a good gauge of, you know, test your body fat and then, you know, follow the program, take the advice we're talking about nutritionally. And then, you know, four to eight weeks later, retest again, because, you know, you may hover around that same kind of body weight and not see a huge dip right away, but you're having this nice exchange where, you know, you've lost five pounds of fat, but you also gained five pounds of muscle. So the scale stayed the same, but you are dramatically changing your body composition and you are in a very nice place where I would love to see my clients. Okay. All right. Perfect. Oh, that's so, awesome. Now, now, Tom, Thomas, you're, you're doing MAPS Anabolic. Uh, I think the best program to follow up with that is MAPS Performance. If you don't have that, we'll send that over to you. Okay. Okay, thank you guys so much. Um, I did want to say just one, one, one. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm in the I'm in the military. I apply for the Air Force, um, and you know, I, I am. My wife makes fun of me because I'm not in social media channels. I don't talk about a lot of the whatever trends on the Instas or the Facebooks. But she makes fun of me because I love y'all's podcast so much. And when I drive to work, that's what I'm listening to. And uh, you guys are authentic and genuine, and uh, I don't know, I, I love it. You guys are changing lives out there, specifically mine. So Hell keep yeah. doing what you're doing. Thank you, really Thomas, enjoy it. and thank you for keeping us safe. Thanks man. for I that. Pre- man. I appreciate what you do. Hell yeah. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, guys. Take it easy. Yeah, I mean, you know, this this conversation is it was good because it shows the nuances of of calories. You know, yeah. um, I remember when we talked to um, Pakolsky, Ben Pakolsky, right? So he was a pro bodybuilder, big. IFBB bodybuilder later on, you know, he, now he's a podcast host and he's kind of a health and wellness guy. Very, very smart guy. One of the smartest bodybuilders I've ever met. Love him. Yep. And I remember talking to him and I had this misconception around pro bodybuilder. I remember this. And I I said, you know, pro bodybuilders have just the the rarest muscle building genetics. That's very true, right? They're like 0.01% of the population can build muscle like that among other things. And I said, and you guys probably also have this incredible digestive system to be able to eat 10,000 calories a day to build all that muscle. And he goes, no, not at all. He goes, we have bodies that can build a tremendous amount of muscle on 3,000 calories a day. And I, it blew my mind. Yeah. Of course, mm-hmm. of course. So calorie efficiency is a real thing. And this guy, you know, he's eating 2,000 calories a day. He's a big guy, but he's like, I feel good. Like, should I stuff myself? Because it's, it's too much food. And it's like, if you feel good, you're healthy and you're getting stronger, you're okay, and it'll probably go up as you get stronger, so don't stress over it. No, I think that was great advice, but I did think it's very important to address what I brought up because totally. that's the thing you got to be careful with yeah. someone like this because you tell them all that, and they're like, oh, cool, great, I'm doing so good. And then they go on vacation. Yeah, then he ha- and he does, it doesn't even have to do it that much. When you're that low a calorie... You know, that's why I use the analogy of maybe we're, you know, Justin at 3,500 calories. They both eat the exact same thing, and it's going to affect yeah. Justin's body. There's more wiggle room for yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Significantly different than that. So even though you're in a comfortable place and you're happy, the, the, the drawbacks of not, you know, trying to push the calories up there is that, hey, you're human. You're probably going to have some birthday cake. You're probably going to have a night out with pizza or popcorn every now and then. And when you do, it's, you know, having a a faster metabolism is is insurance that you don't put all that on body fat. But hey, uh, 500 calories to somebody, you know, which is, we all know 500 calories when you're eating junk food is like not... I can breathe breathe that in. (laughs) Right. Probably... a thousand to fifteen hundred is more realistic. So he could literally eat his 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 whole entire day. Double it. And, yeah, double it yeah. real quick. And that's the that's the drawback of that situation is he could be doing so good for like two weeks straight and then he has one little hiccup and that little hiccup affects him yeah. way more than it would affect Justin having that same hiccup. Our next caller is Jasmine from California. Hey Jasmine, how can we help you? Hey guys, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I'm from Orange County, California. I've been listening to guys for a year and love you guys talking about current events. And I li- used to live in the Bay Area, so I can totally relate when you uh-huh. guys talk about tech trends and mm. housing prices. Yeah, <laughs> <thank> uh, <you. laughs> Ridiculous, right? Yeah. 
So uh, under you guys' influence, this year my focus is strength training. And before that, I did bikini competition and I was doing a lot of cardio. Uh, so my question is, how do I continuously make strength gains during all phases of menstrual cycle? So a little more context on that is, um, so although there is not sufficient research, but there are some research showing that during different phases of menstrual cycle, women performance is at different level. So during the first phase, which is from um, period to ovulation, about two weeks, uh, because of hormones in this phase, women are performing on average at a higher level and lift higher, especially close to ovulation because of higher um, testosterone. Um, many women hit PRs during this time. And after this time, the second phase of the menstrual cycle from ovulation to uh, next period, uh, there is increased um, progesterone, so performance drop. And it's not the case for every woman, but it's exactly the case for me. I notice um, after my ovulation, every month, my strength decreased. And it's very apparent because uh, right now my focus is on pull-up. And I can do a pull-up before ovulation, but I cannot after ovulation. It's very discouraging because I work very hard to get there from a thick band to medium band to thin band and finally got there and then lost it just after ovulation. So um, uh, I read a lot of articles and they all say, oh, during this phase, you should try to relax and do some gentle yoga and gentle cardio, but I really want to make strength gains. So my question is, how do I program my strength training workout during the entire uh, phase so that even though I don't hit PRs every day, even though I don't perform at my best every day, how do I continuously program my workout to uh, make strength gains? Yeah, This is such a cool question that we actually talked before about creating a program specifically yeah. to this. Now, here, here's why we- with Dr. Jolene Brighton. Yeah, here, here's why, okay, here's some of the reasons why we did it. And, and, and I'm gonna ask you a question, okay? So- are you exactly the same as every single woman you've met in your life? No. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course not. So here's the here's the challenge and trouble with these kinds of studies and advice, okay? Generally speaking, there's truth behind some of the stuff, right? So when you're ovulating, um, there's certain hormones that peak, testosterone being one of them. Um, after that, hormones change, and that can change how you feel and blah, blah, blah. The problem with this is if we take this – at face value, oftentimes what it can do is it can make you ignore the most important possible thing, which is to listen to your own body. When I would train a client, I don't care what phase of uh, you know her menstrual cycle she's in. If she feels good and strong today, then we're going to train in a way to you know to, to cater to that. If she's feeling a bit tired, I don't care if she's ovulating and it's in the first phase. And I'm reading this book and it says you should be, make strength gains. If she says she's tired. Well, we're going to train at a much lower intensity. So what I would do if I were you, this is good information to understand and know. It'll help you understand yourself. Ultimately, though, what you need to do is take it and apply it to listening to your own body. So if you feel good, you have good energy, then it's okay to increase the intensity and train harder. If you don't, it's okay to train lighter with less intensity. Follow that. That will guide you much better than these general uh, pieces of advice. Now, to be a little bit more specific with your pull-up question, the mo if you really want to get better at pull-ups, the best possible thing you could do with it is practice them every day. Now, I didn't say work out with them every day, but rather practice them every day. So get a pull-up bar at home, put a resistance band around it because when you practice them, you don't want them to be super hard, and just get better at them every single day. You will see strength gains in your pull-ups very consistently and very quickly if you do it that way. The only the only value I see in the research around this and the articles, because I've, I've read a lot of this stuff too, and we like I said, we talked about writing one of these programs at one point, and this was the challenge and the hurdle we had is there's such an individual variance mm -hmm. between all of our female clients that we train. To Sal's point, you know, I've had somebody on, on day three after their cycle feel this way, and then I've had a, a woman who felt completely the opposite. And so if I wrote a program that's for the masses that is, you know, is telling you, oh, on, on this day of your cycle, back off and do this many sets or reps, 
Like it's going to be so inaccurate for such a large percentage of people. So the only real value I see in this information is to help give someone insight who doesn't understand why, hey man, why every time when I get to this part of my cycle do I feel this way? And then you find out what's going on with your hormones and it's like, oh, okay. And then you can have a, a little bit of empathy for yourself. So you're not, you know, beating yourself up like, what, you know, what am I doing wrong or what's wrong with me? It's like, no, this is completely normal. A lot of women experience this. So just ride the wave. You'll be fine in a few days and you'll be back the other way. But as far as trying to write some rigid program, I don't I mean, we, we don't even believe that take, you know, periods out of this and just an, a person who is trying to figure out their training program. We don't even believe anyone should follow our programs exactly to a mm -hmm. T. You should always, and we're always coaching on this show on how to listen to your body and, and also calculate in, okay, last night. So if you're following a maps program, you know, a period aside, you're just following a maps program and it's your next day is for you to go hit heavy squats. And last night your kid keeps you up till three in the morning and you only get four hours yeah. of sleep. Uh, I'm not going to have you follow that to a T. We are going to make an audible and we're going to, we're going to scale back on the intensity. Well, that's actually the direction I was going to go. I was going to ask like if you've ever kind of checked or, or uh, tried out HRV and, and paid attention to your stress levels. And obviously you're in tune with, you know, your cycle and you're kind of uh, making associations there. I'm wondering too, if, you know, if that's something that you're, um, you know, pursuing and trying to track and, and, and get more understanding around too. Of we, We've talked about this with Joe DeFranco too, about how to get like a grip tester, you know, in the morning and give you a pretty accurate read of, of, you know, how ready you are, your readiness sort of factor going into, you know, a strength workout uh, tends to help uh, if, if you're the, the type of person that wants that kind of insight and, and can apply it. Yeah. So Jasmine, what he's saying essentially is you could, if you really want to get super technical, you could take a grip uh, tester, a, a, I can't remember the name, a dy dynamometer, Dyn dynamometer. Yeah, dynamometer. We It'll measure your pump, strength. My pump store has them. We have one at mindpumpstore.com. You can measure your strength on it. And do this for two weeks or three weeks in a row. Use your non-dominant hand. Notice your trends. And then if you're a lot higher than your average, you know that you probably can go harder that day. If it's much below your average, then you want to go a little easier. But at the end of the day, even that, even that is just teaching you to start to listen to your body. There is right. no better coach in the world yep. than you being able to listen to your body. That's just the bottom line. It just gets line. you more in tune with your natural body signals. Totally. And so here's what I want to do for you. Are you in our private forum, Jasmine? Uh, no. Okay, I'm going to give you free access to our private forum. And here's what I want you to do is I want you to ask people, because we have a lot of trainers and professionals in there. We're in there too. Ask people questions in the forum because you'll get some more personalized advice. So you could say something like, hey, you know, I'm stuck at five pull-ups. Has anybody tried anything here that was successful at getting them better? And you'll get other trainers and coaches commenting, for example. So I think that someone like you will find a lot of value in that. Okay? We also have done very specific uh, videos on our uh, YouTube channel to that exact question. So if you haven't looked at that, make sure you check those out. I'm sure Andrew will link it uh, on the YouTube channel so you can watch some of the videos where we talk about that. And we've done ep episodes dedicated to that question. Totally. So. Yeah, you know, listening to your body, you know, and this is the this is the hard part of uh, of science, all the great information yeah. and studies yeah. and stuff that they come give out. You like a diagnosis, and then, then you stuck there. And I, I guarantee there there's somebody who's listening right now that's uh, well versed in this area and is going like, oh, that's well, there's this, and they they're, they want to talk about how how much more information there is around this. And it's like at the end of the day, all that goes out the window if my client feels amazing that day or terrible. I don't care what all the research points to on how they should feel 100%. at this point in their cycle. If they don't feel that way, I'm adjusting my program. And that goes for talking about somebody who's on a period or not. That does take that out of the equation. And I am making a decision on my program. I might have written the plan today, but when my client shows up, the way they the way they report back to me on how they slept, how they felt, how they how they ate, and all that, and how they feel ready today is going to dictate the intensity that I bring to that workout. Totally. So, Jasmine, we'll see you in the forum, okay? Yeah. So, just one uh, last question. So, when you say adjust the intensity, you mean not only reps but also all kinds of stuff stuff you guys talk about like intervals and yes uh, weight okay yeah yes. just th think of it this way harder or easier 
Yeah. So more intensity is harder, less intensity is easier. And you can use you can do uh, total volume, meaning that you do a little less. Set. So let's say it's a day and you just, even though your program says to get after it and do a hard workout today, you might scale back on the total sets. You may scale back on the weight. All that will lower intensity. And then the, the opposite is true. You come in and it's a day where you are feeling good. You're well rested. And you know maybe at this, this point in your cycle, you tend to always feel stronger. Well, that's the day I'm going to push those limits. Those are the days that I'm going to put more weight on the bar than you usually do and see what you can do. Yes. Thank you very much. No problem, awesome. Jasmine. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Yeah, I've, I've worked with people who get so hung up yeah. on numbers and the books, and this is what the science says, that they completely ignore their own bodies, and it takes yeah. them out of their bodies even more than if they didn't have that information sometimes. So you got to, you kind of take it, absorb it, consider it, but you got to listen to how you feel. That's, nothing else matters at that point. I don't care what your, any test says. You feel like crap. All right, we're not gonna we're gonna train you accordingly. Well, it reminds me of yeah, certain people coming in and they've read articles, they've read studies, and then they're like, oh yeah, that's me, and that, that's always them from there. Right. Like I'm always a hard gainer, or yeah. you know, like I can never. I have a really slow metabolism, and it's just like this uh, definition that they sort of just carry with them from ever. Well, and I don't. I, I'm sure I came off a little dismissive of the science that's related to this, and I don't want to come off that way. It's just that it's providing insight. If somebody uh, had terrible sleep the night night before, or the last workout they did, they overreached and did too much. Those two factors alone, individually, not both combined, but individually by themselves, will impact their uh, capability to work out today more than at a point in their cycle. Right. That's how. And so, so if you're all hung up and you're watching the the period cycle so much, and you're like, oh, this is the day I'm supposed to feel great. But one of those other factors is out of line, or and then and nutrition, another one, like one, one of those three things. Right. Totally. If you're too low of calories that day or the day before, that will make a greater impact than what day you are on your period. Now, and that also. There's a variance there too. So, but maybe for someone else, it's not like that. Maybe somebody else is listening and they're like, man, no, that's not true. Adam, when I'm when, during my cycle, like clockwork, it doesn't matter if I am off calories. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah, but it oh, always points yeah. back to the same thing. You're right. an individual. Yeah, that's, that's right. It. It's, and then that that's you. So yeah. you, you adjust that way because you've learned. And so that's, I like that stuff because it's just one more thing you're, you're paying attention to and it's just making you more aware of your body. And I think there's tremendous value in that, but that's where you got to be careful and, not to get so hung up on and it. And this is why a good trainer or a good coach will outperform any program that's out there in the world that's written for a lot of people because mm -hmm. a good coach or good trainer knows exactly how to individualize the training and nutrition to the person. Our next caller is Sarah from California. Hey, Sarah, how can we help you? Hi, Mind Pump. Thanks so much for taking my call. It's great to talk with you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. So I have a question about something that I've seen circulating on social media recently that I just really wanted your input on. So I've heard some others in the fitness space talking recently about the benefits to women specifically training glutes where the weight is indirectly loading the spine for the purpose of avoiding bulking through the midsection. And I understand that as performing exercises like um, hip thrusts, barbell split squats, lunges, deadlifts, where the weight is below the spine um, to avoid that bulking effect that can happen. And I'm just wondering if you think there's any truth to that or any merit or benefit to women or anyone training that way who want to grow glutes but stay lean? Yeah, good, tiny, good tiny question. Bit, tiny bit of truth. Yeah, here's what yeah. I want you to do. I want you to stop following all those idiots <laughs> yeah, on yeah. social media. Unfollow them. Yeah, Thanks. you know what they're what they're doing is they're you, you know, using very smart but also sneaky and slimy uh, marketing uh, tactics, which is uh, women are afraid of growing their waist but they want to grow their butt. So what they will do is they'll position themselves differently or try to by saying, "I have the butt exercises." That also don't grow your waist, right. it, it implying it just zeroes in on the butt. Implying that the best exercises you could possibly do, don't do those. They're going to make your waist grow. Don't worry about that. That's the dumbest thing ever. I hate that almost more than anything in the fitness space. This whole mentality about freaking out over growing the muscles around your waist. Sarah, even if I trained your core muscles like a bodybuilder, and even if my goal was to make your muscles or your crow of your core grow as much as possible. It wouldn't happen. What you would get is a very sculpted, 
strong midsection. It's very hard to grow those muscles. They don't grow that much anyway. And it's very rare to see somebody with really overly developed muscles of the core. And if and those individuals are the super genetically gifted, I wouldn't worry that about Whoa. that at all. The best exercises to grow your glutes are the best exercises. Barbell squats is one of them. Is it going to activate the core? Of course it is. It's just going to give you a stronger more sculpted score, core. Do not worry about growing your waist with that. If if you're really worried about that, you just maintain a lean body fat percentage. That makes the biggest difference. The, the muscle, don't worry about that. Well, before Adam kind of takes you into the aesthetic sculpting world, uh, this is like nails on a chalkboard to me in terms of dysfunction. Okay, it, it, in terms of protecting your spine and having uh, the ability to uh, avoid pain and, and future problems down the road, uh, you know, we need to consider building up the core to be able to, uh, you know, be able to protect itself appropriately and also have the strength uh, to support, you know, your lower back. So uh, in terms of avoiding it by loading uh, your spine, I, I think it's a disservice to kind of put that kind of information out there. So to address the the tiny bit of truth to this, if a female client who wants to build her butt is working with me and we are doing heavy loaded deadlifts and we're in a calorie surplus, yeah, her butt's going to grow, her hamstrings grow, her legs are grow, and you know what? Maybe she adds a you know a millimeter onto her waist because her core is having to stabilize that. That is going to build some muscle. You're in a calorie surplus, so you may build, build a tiny bit. But the ratio of the waist to the butt will not, I mean, you'll, your butt will grow, outgrow what that waist is going to grow. So the, the as far as- The hip to waist ratio is totally yeah. different. Yeah. And and actually, you know, even though I'm talking aesthetics, Justin's point is so important. And, and I used to- I used to die when I'd see these my peers and when I was competing. This is very common in the in the men's physique world too. So you have all these men's physique guys wearing these, you know, corsets or squeams around their waist to shrink their waist and then avoiding squats and movements like that because they don't want to bulk their waist because judges score us on a, you know, shoulder to waist ratio and if I have big broad shoulders and I have this, you know, tiny little waist, then they they score me better on that. And the same thing goes for like bikini models. So so there's this movement in the space to let's atrophy and shrink the waist area as much as possible and try everything we can to build that. And in theory, there's a little bit of truth to that. But at the the risk of what Justin is pointing out as to that. Yeah, that's a it's a stupid idea. And then to what Sal was saying, like the the ratio you visually are going to, if you build the butt doing the best exercises, which happen to be things like squats, which load the spine, you are missing out on one of the best ways to grow the butt. So the ratio is still going to outweigh what you might see in the waist. And you would never want to, to Justin's point, not train the core because of that. So it's a, it's a, it's a dumb idea that you see uh circuit. It's been circulating for quite some time now. In fact, you can go all the way back to, early episodes in mind yep. pump. And it was one of the first things that we came out and addressed because it was just, I was in the middle of competing and I was telling these guys, they, they at that point, none yeah, of them had couldn't seen, even believe it. Right? They, they, they couldn't believe me when I come and say, you guys won't believe this, but would you believe that I've got bodybuilder buddies of mine that won't squat and they actually wear these waist trainers all day long. And they just didn't believe this was really happening. And yeah, it's still, it still is uh, circulating and popular. And yes, there is a tiny bit of truth to it, but it's splitting hairs, what you're talking about. And it's a, it's a stupid way to go about it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's a very clear red flag that the person you're listening to is an idiot and doesn't know <laughs> fitness and health. No, I swear to God. Yeah. If a fitness and We're health professional- just brass tasks. No, no, I, 100%. It, yeah. If a fitness and health professional is telling people or women- you don't want to grow your waist. Don't do squats. Just do that. That's an idiot. Don't follow them. And I'll say that all day long. That's a terrible, terrible information. Don't worry about that. Your physique will look its best if you strengthen all of it. Not if you avoid some of it for fear of, you know, some aesthetic. Strength is sexy. Well, yeah. put that, well put that here's the there. thing. Like you got, we have to remember that these these bikini athletes and these men's physique competitors, who I think is what who's perpetuating this problem. 
uh, they're not thinking about that. Uh, these are the people that shoot all kinds of drugs in them right. and do yeah. all kinds of... It's take, a different world. Yeah, it's a di they do not care about health and what's ideal for them. They purely want every little competitive edge that will score them one more point higher on stage. So they, so a lot of them, because that's their life, will sacrifice some of this stuff in pursuit of getting that millimeter advantage, yet they're risking something that is yeah. crazy, but they'll do it for that reason. Yeah, by the way, in real life, the best looking midsections are developed. They're not just small, they're developed. And so that's muscle like anything else. But like I said, I could train your core with trying to build it as much as possible. And I, and I might, like Adam said, I might be lucky if I grow your waist through muscle by a millimeter. If I'm lucky, it's just not going to happen. So don't worry about that. Now, are you following one of our programs at the moment? I'm not. I'm relatively new to weight training and I totally hear you guys about, you know, avoiding the social media hype of all of these different like quick fixes and things. I definitely think of you guys as the gold standard. That's why I wanted to ask this question, but I'm not currently following the program. All right. Well, thank you. You're on the right track. I'm going to send you MAPS Anabolic. I think that's the program you should start with. Start in pre-phase, follow pre-phase for about six weeks, then move to phase one and so on. And I think you'll love the results. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate your time. Thank awesome. you, Sarah. Thank you, Thank Sarah. You. Man, that is frustrating. It's, that there's there's it's, like people with this mess still persists. That it's, just say the dumbest shit and, and poor, you know, she's 24. Luckily, she found us. But, you know, you're at that age and, you know, you judge authority by followers and by attention and, oh, the person looks good. Yeah. And you end up harming yourself or just spinning your, your tires in the dirt for years and then later on realizing, oh my God, that person was dumb. I should have never followed that yeah, advice. Yeah, too. And and I know a lot of this is coming from the the aesthetic side, right? This is not, these are definitely not performance people. These are not definitely people that are thinking right. about longevity. This is somebody who's like, can I make my yeah. ass look as big as I can with my waist being can as small as possible? Can you awesome ratios that hourglass and and, the, and even though it has a little bit of true, tiny, tiny fraction of truth behind it, it's it really doesn't because if you eliminate the the single best exercise your butt won't grow as much yeah your butt won't grow as much right. yeah. so okay so maybe you make sure that waist doesn't grow anything by putting this corset on it or whatever like that but then you don't do something like squatting and you only do all the other movements that also build the butt great like hip thrust amazing for that all those are amazing movements but to just eliminate one of the best exercises for doing that you're missing out on those automatic gains on that ass and you it, even if it takes the waist up another millimeter the inch you're giving up on the butt you're losing in this one yeah it's like it'd be like removing two ribs to get a smaller waist wow look my waist is smaller yeah. i got two less ribs <laughs> I love, yeah i love that tag like automatic gains on that ass girl <laughs> our next caller is bethany from kentucky hey bethany how can we help you Hey guys, uh, thanks for taking my question. So thanks to you guys. I'm in the beginning processes of kind of reconstructing my whole mindset around fitness and nutrition. Um, I'm a former athlete long time ago. And what we are doing now, we're doing this seven day program that you guys put out, my husband and I are. And it. Cool. my question is, what does PRs look like? Do you guys do that with these kind of programs? How do I... What does that look like, I guess, is my question. No, that's a great question. So PR stands for personal record, right? So it's like I lifted more than I did before. I did more reps than I did before. Now, if you're gonna be a if you're gonna compete in a sport where that's part of the criteria, like powerlifting, Olympic lifting, strongman competition. Strongman. There's a very specific structure you want to follow of when you test out your your new PR leading up to a particular event. Now, if that's not you, if you're working out because you want to be fit and healthy and you want to do this for a long period of time, there there really is no set in stone when you should, you I for me personally, I allow my body to dictate when that's going to happen. How do I feel? Oh wow, I'm feeling really strong today. Maybe I'll go heavier, maybe I'll try myself, you know, try going a little harder. I will say this though. Especially if you work out for a long time, Chasing the PR can definitely become a problem. In fact, I rarely do that now because I don't care as much. The risk of breaking an old record does not outweigh the the or, do, or outweighs the benefit, right? The benefit of doing so. So now I just train. If I feel good, I get a little harder, but I don't necessarily try to break old records. But I guess uh, otherwise, the message is allow your body to dictate that. So depending on how you feel 
Um, but I definitely wouldn't be doing PRs every single week. I think that's maybe for beginners. But no, after that, if, yeah. if you're unless you're competing. So, uh, Bethy, I competed in men's physique, and I made it all the way to the professional level, never testing a PR. I did not start. I did not start testing PRs until I got with these assholes, and we were all com- we were all competitive about who was squatting more, who was deadlifting more. And Sal was so impressed or so impressive with his deadlift that I wanted to see if I could catch him. He couldn't, and so <laughs> so I was on a mission. Still on top. For all ego driven, no value in how I'm adjusting my program or anything like that. Because there's going to be someone who's going to try and make the case to you about how valuable it is to know where you need to be at. Not bullshit. If you just care about feeling better, getting stronger, looking better, you can get to the highest level of that and never test your PR one time. And the truth is, one of the reasons why I think I feel so passionately about telling someone like like you about this is because I've had more aches and pains uh, today and, and chasing PRs with these guys than I ever had in my life before. And it just, when you, when you push your limits like that, it is extremely difficult. It's almost inevitable. You're going to have a little bit of something off, and that's all it takes to tweak something or stress something. And now my joints are inflamed, and so yeah. doing that to me is it, it only makes real sense if I've got a client who is really into you know chasing PRs, and we want to see these games. But if you are just doing it because you want to see it, I would. Do it as little as possible, to be honest with yeah. you. In terms of, yeah, sustainability and longevity, I completely 100% agree. However, there are some days where just all the stars are lined up. And you're going through uh, one of your favorite exercises, say it's a squatter bench or something, and you just just feel that weight moving easy. I, I honestly, it, it, you do it like a couple times a year and you know, when you get that feeling that one day, like I have no problem with doing a PR that day and, and having fun with it. But literally it's just, I look at it as fun. Like, let's see uh, what I can do today because I mean, my body's giving me all that feedback that I have everything working for me. But other than that, uh, yeah, to their point, it's really not something I program in. Uh, I'm always trying to, to, to be smarter with my programming and, and sort of check myself because, you know, that inner athlete that you described, uh, you know, is going to come up in the forefront, is going to make you do something stupid. Uh, so I'm always checking myself on that intensity. But, you know, like if your body is uh, ready that day and it's it's a fun thing to do, go for it. Now, Bethany, you said your fault. So we did, for people watching this, we did, uh, uh, we gave out a free Seven day a week kind of workout program and included, uh, of course, resistance training, some mobility. There's lots of components to it, um, and it's a great workout. Uh, but it's out there for free, so hopefully we can link that in this show. Now I'm asking for you: How long have you been doing this particular workout? Uh, uh, only about two weeks, and okay. it's been. I'm. I'll be honest, and you guys touched on it. It's been really tough because I want to do more. Like mm-hmm. I'm in that route where I'm just like, okay, let's get back to where we were. I'm trying to get back to old good habits. And this has been really hard to not do more, but at the same time, like I've felt really good. My husband said the same thing too. He's felt really good because we're not going so hard and we're not trying to push it with everything. So. Perfect. And that's actually a lot. We actually, that was a seven day a week yeah. thing we did. Well, so yeah, it, you're yeah. no, you're good. Trust the process. You're doing a good job. I'm going to, I'm going to let you in our private forum so that you can have support and you can ask other people because that's going to help you. It's going to help you a lot because someone like yourself, um, I get it. You know, you, you want to do more because you can. Not necessarily the right thing to do, but especially if you're competitive, it's it's going to you're always going to be pushing that direction. The private form will help. Problem. Yeah, you can communicate with other people, coach yourself out of it, trust the process, share your progress. Um, and after about twelve weeks of doing that, you'll you'll be. I think you'll want to move to another maps program, and we have plenty to choose from. But for now. I'm going to let you in the private forum. Uh, make sure you tag us when you post in there so we can see you, okay? For sure. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank awesome, you very buddy. much. You know, PRs are like, they're such a good thing, but also such a bad thing. Did you know I didn't even know what they yeah. were until like midway through my career? I know. I remember mm. you telling us that. I funny. didn't. I didn't know what it was until- We used to call it Max. Like, would you max out? On yeah, it? so I, I do. I do remember hearing PRs. max out of CrossFit, I believe, or maybe yeah, it was because uh, I mean, I wasn't. I also wasn't very uh, privy to the you know. Um, 
powerlifting community. So maybe they were using that term. Yeah, and I, have. so I wasn't around that. So that's part of the reason why I probably didn't hear it at all. But it wasn't until like CrossFit became really popular that I started to hear it all the time. In fact, I remember I would start getting people coming into the gym first time and they'd be, you know, oh, you know, I want to get my PR to this. And I'm like, what? I remember having to ask a, a person coming to get training for me. What, yeah, what, you know, what's a personal P responsibility? Like, like, yeah, I was like, what's a what yeah, you public for? relations? You need a public, <laughs> public relations, relations person? I don't no, understand. It's, I don't it's, understand. Really, <laughs> it's really good because I think it made uh, strength something to focus on right. or track. I agree. Mainstream. Before that, especially women didn't even track strength. They didn't care. I always use the five pound dumbbells. How many times do you get a client like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, how long have you been using five? Oh, I don't know. 15 years. You know? yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got to get you a little stronger or, mm -hmm. or challenge you a little bit. So that's the good. The bad is it could be addicting and you could chase it and that could be everything and then you hurt yourself. Yeah. That's why I so, feel yeah. conflicted about talking about it because I totally agree with you that, and that's one of the things we talk about what, I, what we all like or love about CrossFit is they really did reintroduce strength training for the masses, yep. you know, mm -hmm. making it popular again to get strong. And especially for women, like before CrossFit, I don't feel like anybody was communicating that message really well. Right. And it is the right message. It is the right message. Focus on getting stronger and try and get yourself strong. But not at the, the the risk of potentially hurting yourself or also the potential of getting addicted to PRs, which this is the classic person to do that. Totally. Yeah. So a person who is an athlete is the is the one that has to be the most careful about moving into that competitive chasing PR. Here, yeah, not in spite of your body signals that it's providing you. That's yes. why I liked your advice. It's really and, good and advice. Here, and here's the, look, here's the bottom line, okay? Uh, even if you do everything perfectly, if you work out long enough, you're going to have to make peace with the fact that you, you're you not going to be chasing PRs. At some point, yeah. you're not going to hit PRs. <laughs> I'd be very discouraged if that Yeah, so <laughs> like if you do this long enough, you got to figure this out no matter what. Because if you're chasing PRs all the time and you're going to you plan on working out forever, <laughs> at some point, you're going to have to figure this out because you ain't going to be hitting PRs in your 50s and 60s and 70s. I also want to add something that I wish that we'd see more of it. And I didn't get a chance to tell her this. But I wish that um, we would talk about PRs because it sounds for personal record. So it doesn't always have to be more weight on the bar. Hmm. Why not a personal record on how deep you were able to get a squat or how far you can get your, your shoulder around in a, a wall circle right. or how much you can lift your back leg up in a 90-90? Like hmm. we need to set PRs on other metrics that are health related or improve the quality of movement opposed to just measuring PRs at, you know, or a PR being of your stamina endurance or stuff like yeah. that. Like, I hit a PR the other day for how tired I was. I was like, this is the most tired <laughs> yeah. I've ever I've ever been. But you know what I PR. mean though, right? Yeah. Like, no, totally. like we we just for always quality. Yeah, yeah we're, like, we're all or yeah, or quality of movement. I yeah. had a, I did the most beautiful 185 pounds. Okay, 185 pounds squat is nothing for me, but it was the most perfect barefoot beauty. That's a PR. Yeah. Like, right. that's, like there's nothing wrong with that being a PR or a personal best of of movement quality. And I wish that it wasn't always centered around weight on the bar because I think that leads. Yeah, that would be a cool movement. I'd be all for that. Excellent, right. excellent point. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Go check out our guides. Lots of great information that can help you with any fitness goals. We have a lot of guides on there, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsal, and Adam at mindpumpadam.